This is a brand new series to this channel. It continues the work and the information we've provided on the 2545 Sharps cartridge through experience, hand loading, and accuracy testing. It will help to provide real world results when used in hunting scenarios to give a terminal wound cavity and game stopping performance report. But for now, we're simply going to talk about cartridges, what they're used for, and what they're capable of. This efficient little quarter bore is much more handy and, and much more useful than many may consider. And its biggest limitation right now is the fact that only one company, Federal Ammunition, and one other company, Sharps Rifle Company, is producing and marketing it. It's SAMI approved, but there's not enough of a market currently, apparently, for larger manufacturers or even small time ammunition manufacturers to grab on and produce it. I'd like to change that. I'd like to see this cartridge go places. It is an intermediate cartridge. It is not going to take an elk at 600 to 1,000 yards. It's not going to be a barn burner. And it should not receive the fanfare and the, frankly, idiocy of the superiority complex of the 6.5 Grendel. Not that the 6.5 is a bad cartridge. In fact, the bullet is very efficient. And the cartridge does very well, but it is still an intermediate. Its advantage is that it uses very efficient 6.5 caliber bullets but doesn't throw them at speeds that quite give you the energy a lot of people think they're getting. And that leads me to my next point. Energy and speed don't always equal performance. Bullet technology is a big thing. If your bullet's going really fast, but bleeds speed, muzzle energy doesn't matter. What matters is when you hit the target. And unfortunately, that's what the premier flagship load does. It bleeds energy with this cartridge. But that's because of bullet choice. I believe they chose wrong. I believe that they chose something that was affordable for them and could be loaded easily and was available in great quantity. But a good choice is going to be the cartridge we're going to talk about today. But before that, let's talk about this cartridge in an overview. Just so those who are maybe not as well acquainted with it or those who need us a blank slate and background, with background information to write down and consume the information I'm about to provide. The 2545 is a cartridge that has been a, has seen a fair amount of praise, fanfare, and criticism since its approval as a SAMI cartridge standardized in 2012. The goal of the cartridge is to deliver greater energy and more catastrophic wounds via stuffing a .257 diameter bullet in a .223 Remington parent case. The Sharps Rifle Company holds that with an 87 grain spear hot core, the factory loading achieves 3,000 feet per second out of a 20 inch barrel and 1,700 foot pounds of energy, or roughly thereabouts. After this, the cartridge's biggest selling point is that all it requires to be changed into it on the AR-15 platform of firearms is the barrel and of course muzzle devices. And while the latter is probably the biggest pusher, being that just a barrel change gives you a, a bigger caliber for the cartridge, for those looking for more knockdown power in their AR without going to a 6.5 Grendel or 6A SPC, the former fact of it having a lot of energy and a larger bullet has a little bit of marketing playing with it. Sharps ammunition is loaded by ammo giant Federal and made to exacting specifications. That being said, the flagship round, currently one of four being offered as factory new and remanufactured, does not spec out on paper as advertised. What a surprise, right? Because really, all these cartridges don't exactly do what the manufacturer says they should. In fact, the, uh, the SAMI accepted load data puts the not so aerodynamic hot core bullet and load at around 2850 feet per second and the cartridge itself at about 55,000 to 58,000 PSI or cups. So with poor aerodynamics and out of barrels less than 20 inches, the round is doomed to be 150 to 200 yard and in deer getter just like the cartridge is supposed to replace. which 
nowadays can actually perform farther out with the right bullet technology. So why are we limiting ourselves to this is a side question. However, not as all gloom and doom for this awesome little beast and there are currently a number of bullets in the 70 to 100 grain range that will allow the hunter and firearm enthusiast at large to create substantially more effective loads. Now the disclaimer here is that unless you hand load you will not be getting these loads anytime soon. However, do not dismay as with enough voices and pressure thrown their way the industry will respond with factory equivalent or facsimile cartridges. That is part of a write-up. I did switch some words around and didn't say it as eloquently as I had written it. But all that stands true. And today we're going to introduce the first of my finalized cartridges for this. I believe it is the best. And I don't have a way to pr test pressure, but very consistently I've reduced the, the loading and, and made it so that there are no pressure signs and I'm very accurate with it out of the rifle out of my 18 inch rifle and soon to be seen out of the 20 inch without any more delay let's get rid of these factory boxes this round I affectionately name the Reaper now the Reaper falls under category one in my multi category system here for these cartridges which I've loaded up and am currently testing and evaluating. It falls under deer and medium game. However, it could be used for self-defense, possible barrier penetration and destruction, possible light body armor penetration as well, and of course just a kick-ass looking around. Here's the load data. The bullet a Barnes TTSX. The weight, 80 grains. Ballistic coefficient of 0.316. Type, copper solid ballistic tip boat tail. Bullet cost and quantity per box, 28 to $34. 50 a box. Not super cheap, but a really good bullet. Powder in this cartridge, accurate, 2200. Charge, 28.2 grains. Compressed load, you bet your sweet ass it is. Velocity, 3,125 feet per second consistent out of a 20 inch barrel, 3,025 feet per second consistently out of an 18 inch barrel. And for those of you wondering what that means energy wise, so you don't have to do it in your head, out of a 20 inch barrel at the muzzle, you're looking at 1,730 foot pounds of energy. And of course, out of an 18 inch barrel with 100 foot per second loss, you're looking at 1,620 foot pounds of energy. With a 20 inch barrel, comparatively to a 62 grain fusion round loaded by federal premium ammunition for a 223 AR traveling at 3,000 feet per second out of a 16 inch barrel you're looking around 1,350 to 1,450 foot pounds of energy you are adding around 300 foot pounds of energy in a much better bullet now that's not to say that these TTSX are not available for the 223 and that the 223 can't do what these are, but these do it just ever so much better. Again, it's still a 600 yard point target load, but it's really good. Now here's where the potential accuracy for this cartridge with the right rifle rested off a bench, not quote unquote real world scenario, but rested off a bench. And you have seen this round before it was finalized grouped. 0 0.085 to 1.35 MOA. My experience as the barrel heats up the string gets a little bit larger. The first couple rounds are on top of each other. You take a three round group, you're looking at sub MOA. You take a five round group out of the first five round group out of the gun without cooling, you're looking at sub MOA, 0 0.85 to one MOA. More than acceptable. And this is at 100 yards, mind you. So let's talk about this brilliant little cartridge. And again, I'm reading here from my write up. This load is my absolute favorite among all that I've played with to date. It will do exactly what you need it to. The bullet is of an excellent design and its range and capabilities are near or on top of all the intermediate calibers currently available. That includes 762 by 39 that includes 300 blackout by a long shot, that includes its parent, the 556 223 and it 
out to 400 yards goes neck and neck on performance with a 6.5 Grendel with factory loads. I'm sorry to say. If you want to argue about this, we'll talk about it. But it's damn close enough. I'm not saying it surpasses it, but it's damn close enough that it's all you need. It, it's a lethal option for deer in similar size game out to 450 yards with good shot placement. And out of a 20, out of 20 and 18 inch barrels, it remains supersonic to and past approximately 1,000 yards. While this is a compressed load maxed out on pressure, it is extremely consistent. For black bear and very large swine, I would put a cap at 150 to 200 yards for ethical reasons, but it could certainly take the latter animal past those distances. A bear, and this is not me reading from this, but a bear, I would cap it at 150 and I probably would want to be sub 100 with it. Just because it's an intermediate cartridge, I, don't, I wouldn't want to take the risk and I'd want to be very ethical. If I'm hunting bear, dedicated wise with an AR, I'm going to pick a cartridge like 2545 and I'm going to pick a place where I'm not going to be shooting past 50 probably. And if I am, I'm going to pick a bigger gun. This copper cell ballistic tip bullet will perform at sub 2000 feet, foot per second speeds and deliver the utmost effect on target. Its decent BC ensures it does not bleed energy like the Spear Hot Core and CR Game King bullets, making it a great cartridge for whitetails, antelope, medium to small hogs, and coyotes at all reasonable hunting distances where an AR-15 style rifle will be used. In short, it is the epitome of what the intermediate quarter bore is supposed to be. So. That's the finalized cartridge, guys. That's number one, and it is called the Reaper. If you're at Sharps Rifle Company and you'd like to contact me, please private message me. I'd love to talk to you guys about trying to bring this to market. I don't really want any kickbacks or anything. I just want to see this guy become available to everybody. I know that the load will have to be reduced slightly, but if we can get 3,100 feet per second out of a 20-inch, a true 3,100 feet per second, we're looking at money. It's a serious cartridge for serious use, and I love it. Thanks again, everybody. Hope you had a good time. I hope this helps you out a little bit. Of course, the load data is in the beginning there. I will post it in the, in the description of the video, so if you're looking for a write-up, it'll be there. However, make sure you do go down by at least 5 to 10% to start the load and work your way up. Don't exceed it, please. I've worked long and hard to make sure this is a safe load, and as always, Keep your powder dry. God bless.